Sagittarius. Hello Sagittarius, this is your forecast for September of 2013. And yes, there has been a few distress calls from you Sagittarians and I know it is hard and you know this plutonian energy going through your second house of finances have been a little rough for those of you, you know, in that first third of the sign. And uh, it is still working its way at you and it is breaking new grounds because Uranus is there at square and it's kind of building that tension. It's like the tectonic plates, okay? They're like right there and something's got to give where it, when it slips. And this is what you're waiting for. Where is the slip? Where is that pressure release? Where, you know, where's that vent? And there was a little bit here of a ventilation that could have taken place here just recently here, a few days ago here in September, I would say here just in that first week uh, of August, I mean, is when um, Jupiter and uh, Pluto were at odds with each other in opposition. And that Pluto already had the square coming in from Uranus, so that was like a, a big to-do thing, okay, giving room and space for something new. Whatever was vented there at that time, I think, was uh, good for you. And uh, for others, there's more coming in behind it. But there's good news, too. You know, it, it's like, yes, you are shifting a whole lot of your onlook on what is important to you. Sagittarius because your second house is the uh, ruled by uh, Saturn and so this Pluto has a Pluto Saturn effect to it um, the second house here in your solar scope is Capricorn where, where Saturn rules and, and having these two together well what is Pluto trying to say what is it telling you well Capricorn uh, likes status you know it builds uh, one's goals and uh, one it works really hard to attain those goals and Saturn kind of gives you that stick to itness. You don't want to give up. And yes, you would like to have some material status back from that energy that you put out. Now, Pluto may not allow you to do so and it's kind of ripping away, stripping away um, the old norm of how you used to look at values. And uh, so, you know, when we, if you have a rough diamond, it's still a diamond. But if you can't see the shine of it, well, it's not doing too much, is it? Then it just looks like a corroded rock. But as we kind of work on polishing those facets, of course it, it hurts, right? And, and the pressure there, and pressure is the only way diamonds are created. So this is what's going on in your psychological, spiritual makeup. Uh, deep down into the roots of your genetics and so just bear with it. Um, the best way to deal with it, uh, Sagittarius, I, I would say is like, yes, uh, acknowledge it. Do not try to fight it, it will just get worse. Uh, try to avoid anger, which Pluto really wants to erupt and get it out there. That is not helping much either. Um, so the best way to deal with it is see it, acknowledge it, become the observer. And I've talked to, I don't know how many private clients here just recently about this whole situation where you're feeling that your inner guts are being eaten up by this energy. But the thing is, it's to become the observer rather than the participant. And this is a very good way to work with things when things get a little rough. Not just for you, this goes for any sun sign. But, but when things get a little rough, and I'm mentioning it to you specifically here on the videos, because it's such a long-lasting transit in this area, you're going to have it for another 10 to 15 years. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to be under this pressure all the time, because we'll have other transits coming in and lifting it at times as well. But when you become the observer of something rather than the participant, from this vantage point, there's no emotion. The, the, you only see and, and you perceive but when you're at the participant you're down in this life uh, 
DNA, you're down in this three-dimensional world where it hurts, where your emotions are all entangled and into it, and then you live the drama of it, and this is what creates and builds a whole lot of tension. So you want to kind of go up on this mountaintop, look down at the valley and become the observer and just look at it and acknowledge it and go, uh-huh, yep, that's how it is. You know, and this will free you from so much of what actually is exhausting you. And the other beauty of going up on this tripolar point up here is that you're looking down into the valley and imagine there's a forest there. Now you're kind of lost down here and you can't find your goal. You know where you want to go, but you can't find it. Now, when you climb up here, you look down at the valley. You can see the beginning and the end. You will see the path you need to take. And this will allow you an internal strength, a spiritual strength, when you know and you can see where you're heading. So you can climb down the mountain, go down into that forest. You're no longer lost. You know exactly where the path is to get you through it faster. So that's one little hint and tip that I hope you take to heart and use it as a tool. Anyhow, let's move on. We have a work month for you here, Sagittarius, because we got the Sun, New Moon, and Mercury in your uh, 10th house for career. So there might be things now that are coming up to the forefront. For those of you that's been really good about putting your applications in for, for work, not hearing anything, well then this month may be the month for you where you can get some feedback and perhaps also be called into some interviews. Now we also have uh, Venus here in the 11th house for groups and organizations and friendships and so this month is going to be a little bit more social perhaps where you're a little bit more out and about doing those things that give you pleasure. Uh, Venus is in the sign of Libra and it rules Libra. So in this area, I see how you're able to more kind of get in touch with those things that make you feel good and which can recharge your spirit in many, many ways. Quite creatively too, I'd like to say. And then Mars is kind of working in the higher mind right now. It's in the ninth house uh, for you, uh, looking to reach goals beyond where you are today. Uh, meaning you have to like up and out of your box uh, and looking towards foreign shores uh, or horizons uh, and not necessarily in the literal sense that you're going to be traveling though you can because Mars will definitely do that in this placement but it's also those horizons that we have in our mind and Mars being the goals and uh, where we're putting our energy towards uh, wanting to achieve and break through now so you have like a double fire thing going on because Mars is is fiery and is in the house of Sagittarius which is also fire and in the sign of Leo so you got a triple whammy fiery nature here in September and put it to use you know don't hold back uh, if you have any great ideas this is the time to launch them the ninth house also has to do with networking especially because Venus is there um, in the 11th house so you can have social networks going on it's a great time for you to broadcast uh, to for example find a publisher if you do writing all of those things of the written spoken word um, perhaps also teaching or learning something new and uh, so it, it's like it's exciting uh, the planets are for the most part on the upside of your chart right now bringing you out into the external world even though you have like uh, three planets below uh, the horizon but they're the outer planets anyway and they move slowly and normally they kind of work on the subconscious level anyhow but all of your personal planets are up and out and active great month for you here Sagittarius and we'd like to see what Jupiter can do for you here this month. And we've got a couple of good aspects that, that she can bring you. Uh, and we'll be looking at those dates here in just a little bit. Uh, but the long-term changes is, yes, your financial, yes, it is your home, and yes, it is within the creative fields where self-expression has been very strong for you, especially over this last year, year and a half, but even more so as it's taking on a, a, a grip, a deeper grip and root on you and it's wanting to come out it's really wanting to get there so if you have anything to send out there on those public channels 
um, this would be a great month for it. So starting off here on the first here, Sagittarius, we got the Sun and Pluto. So whatever it is that you're uh, aiming at, and it seems to be something here financial. Uh, the Sun is in your career house, Pluto's in the second house. Uh, you might get an offer here on this day. Uh, if so, look at it closely because Pluto also has the power of transforming something. And uh, the new moon on the 5th is also in the very same area of your career. So this would be the time for you to actually, you know, uh, put out your affirmations of wanting to focus on your goals and allow that to be uh, one of your, your uh, highest pursuits here for now. And we have Mercury moving into Libra here on the 8th. And so she will be that much more chatty out and about in your social circles and uh, with friends and uh, groups and organizations. So if you have any presentations, this would be a wonderful time here after the 8th. Plus you have all that Marsy energy too in the showmanship house of Leo or, or sign of Leo so you would come across doing your your speeches fantastically at this time and then Venus is moving into uh, Scorpio here and this will be on the 10th and so what she's going to be doing she's going to go a little deeper uh, sink a little bit more into spirit and become a little bit more passionate about what it is you want as far as love so your love life might take a step back only from the external, but not from the internal. In fact, it's going to step up on the inside. You might have uh, encounters, you might have communications with a loved one that will really reach really deep into the depth of uh, his or her psyche. And it might also align you spiritually or telepathically a little stronger too here this month. Then we have uh, Mercury, not too happy here on the 14th, so there might be an argument, might be a misunderstanding or just some uh, annoyed feeling uh, coming to the forefront. But it's a quick come, quick go. Don't pay too much attention to it. Don't let it upset you so that you, you kind of cling to it. Just let it go and you'll be through it. Because right after here, I see some action coming in when we have Mars and Uranus at trying this is beautiful. It's from your uh, ninth house <clears throat> into your fifth house. So you might get an opportunity or an offer. Uh, and in that case, <clears throat> it might be something that could be quite creative, exciting. You know, Uranus can be extremely exciting in its energy. And it's in the house of Leo, so that's fire, and in the sign of um, Aries. So it kind of like new starts, new beginnings, entrepreneurship. Uh, that is creative and fun-loving, which is Leo. And then also coming up here, training uh, Mars in Leo. So keep your eye on that. That's around the 14th. And that energy can start a day or two prior than you have the 14th, and it will linger another couple of days. So fantastic time. And I see how you're communicating with this new person or a contract or group, or whoever it is. Uh, way into the 16th here and agreeing upon some kind of perhaps even collaboration. And Pluto, which has been asleep in your financial house, uh, is going to go direct. Now it's been retrograde for several months. It's going to start picking up speed, moving you forward, but don't expect too much too soon because it takes a long time from it. It has been going backwards to actually find its traction and move forward again. But at least you know that she's waking up from her deep, deep sleep. And now she'll be working on your side for you. And you know by the time the end of this transit of Pluto, you will be so renewed uh, in where you're at and where you're heading and how your financial situations will be looking for you down the road. Everything between now and then is all about you transforming what values are to you? What would you place in values? Is it always just material values or is it also the immaterial values? That's what Pluto wants you to work on and figure out for you. Then we have a beautiful day, some healing, some beautiful uh, words uh, or energies uh, shared. 
This will be in your 12th house. So this is uh, uh, Chiron at work here, training with Venus. So it is uh, a day where you might just have a little extra smile on your face. And then we have a karmic point where the moon node will be touching on um, Saturn. This is in your 12th house. Now, the 12th house for you is your karmic area, you know, and having uh, the node there, well, the node is your destiny. It's a point of destiny. And, it's, and it touching on your Saturn, well, the two of them kind of bring some kind of uh, destiny point together, destiny and karma. So pay attention to that here on the 25th, what will arise for you. And then we end this month here with Venus and um, Jupiter, which is coming together here really, really nicely for you. That will be between the 12th and also between the 8th. So it's the two water houses, and they're quite psychic. They, they, they sense, they feel, they intuit things. So when we have these two beautiful planets together here, well, there's joy and there's expansion and a sense perhaps even of celebration where you can feel proud of whatever accomplishments have been made coming together and you would be feeling this deeply on an inner level as well as probably also on a financial level something can come to you around the 26th and that can be in many ways it, it could be uh, funds money it could be um, um, something else that that uh, represents uh, value for you and uh, where appreciation and gratitude is coming forward so this is pretty much what we had here for you, uh, Sagittarius, this month. I wish you a really, really good September. The fall is beautiful, especially for you up there in the northern states where the colors are starting to change a little bit. It's beautiful. So you take care. Until next month.